Good morning. Morning, Mark. Morning. Welcome home, buddy. This is where the Gibson boys are from. Poor Bill. You're gonna be screening some topsoil over there, I'm thinking. In the little old country. This is the house we're working at. A bunch of walls and stuff we're doing here. Nice, nice size house. Good size house. Beautiful design. Built by one of the best builders in North Bay. There's a lot going on here this morning. They're in there with an old farm tractor there trying to cut all that down. Got a little brush hog attached to it. Running off the PTO. Let's see if we can uh, check them on out here. Oh yeah. He's making it happen. It's a little wet in there. Hopefully I don't have to go get him unstuck at some point. But no, he's, he's making it happen. That's cool. Awesome. Yeah, welcome to Corbeil, Ontario. It's not very far. It's a little bit east of North Bay. This is where we're from. We actually went to school. <laughs> About three kilometers that way. Our school is in the middle of nowhere. Anyways, we're getting some tools going here. We get some bug spray on because the black flies are just horrible and the brush hog is just stirring them up even worse. Kind of hope they would have waited till we were gone to do that, but okay, it's all good. All right, get some tools together and bring you back. Ah, yeah. Can't start your day off without your second cup of tea. Thanks, boys. And as we go over and show you what we're doing right now, just small part of the project. Got the 259 here, the little 303. You notice there's a box sitting over there. Mark's about to open up a can of whoop ass. No, I'm just kidding. He's opening up a can of uh, primer. <laughs> He's laughing. All right, so what we got here is Resisto. This is for uh, foundation. It's not for roughing windows. It's for the foundation. Poured foundation done by Levante. Really, really, really good company here in North Bay. When it comes to foundations poured, they are king. So we're doing a retaining wall here. Going to be just six inches lower than the masonry. Um, from this corner to right beside the stairs. And you'll notice, I don't know if you can see it on camera. I got a red line painted out, vertical and horizontal, all the way around. So what we're doing here is we're going to actually be doing uh, Resisto. They have blue skin in place. The first thing I noticed last week, um, Mark came out with me. I said, what do you see wrong with that frickin' uh, blue skin installation? It's going horizontal and not vertical, but not a big deal on a poured foundation because you are not going to get expansion retraction out of this. That, I believe, is at least a 10 inch foundation. That ain't moving. And the footing is way, way, way down there. And the company that does this stuff, they know what they're doing. They're a really good company. So to do this, you have a primer, water-based primer. It goes directly on the foundation on the inside of that red line that I marked out. And then you gotta let it cure slightly. Let it set, basically is the best word to say it. And that all depends on the humidity, uh, the temperature, etc. Just like concrete. It's gonna take concrete longer to cure when it's cold and there's no sun hitting it. And the sun is, oh, I was talking about a shadow, way behind there on the east. So, yeah, we're gonna get this uh, this done. We'll take you through step by step once we get going. Bam. We got a cameraman here. We're gonna show you how to actually apply this stuff. Shane, the cameraman. He's this dude. Yep, this do. The normal of these rolls are quite a bit longer. We're not going to need copyright. Oh yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, we don't want that. So you peel the first little top off of there. You never, you never unroll the whole damn thing. Like a small piece like this you could, but I still don't recommend it. All right, pull her. There we go. This is why we mark our lines on here too. And you start in the middle, go in the middle, and then work your way out. 
Like a so. Like a so. <laughs> now we seal this sucker up. So we hold each end tight. JT's gonna go right down the middle there. Yeah, you. You. Now we work our way on out. And we're overlapping the blue skin, obviously. The shingle effect. Everything you do should be that damn shingle effect. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Tell you what? Yeah, and we use the, uh, the Resisto. It's the same as the blue skin, just a little bit less money. That's how it's applied. Now this, the, the water, uh, the membrane, or sorry. <laughs> Oh my goodness, the primer will vary depending if you have a tar foundation or not. It's going to be completely different. Sand on there. I'm sorry, right? So, um, this is a uh, water base. We can use that on a bare foundation. But if you have a tar, existing tar foundation, there's a whole other different. Oh, hold on here, bro. I got to go first. All the way to that one. There we go. There's a different type of. Uh, primer you got to use when you have a tar foundation. It's actually like a tar primer. And you can actually know when it's ready to go. I think they did this about 30 minutes ago. Oh, yeah, he's stuck here. Stuck on the edge. Living on the edge. Slow, so I don't kick sand all over this. It's sandy. This right here, you can touch it where it's sticky. Finger sticks to it, you know you're good to go. But you do have to wait a little bit to actually apply your blue skin. But it's 20 degrees out today and it's really hot in the sun. There's no humidity in the air whatsoever right now, so it's, it's setting up pretty fast. -ish. Oh, we got uh, scrap oh, pieces. I don't know if we can use those because all the sand and shit in there. I probably need one piece if those ones are good. They're sand in them. Oh yeah, I think I need those. I guess we'll have to cut uh, two pieces. That's right. Anyways, that's the gist of it. When we do uh, weeping tile projects, that's what we do. Like I said, your primer will differ depending if you have an existing tar foundation or if you have an actual exposed foundation um, with no tar on it. Um, yeah, so in this case, we could use the water-based, no problem. Now there is a sealer we run on the top there. You actually see it right here. That's really not much different than the uh, uh, than the rubber in behind there. You could use that. Or you could also use PL Premium Construction Adhesive. That's what we got, so that's what we're going to use. He's got some pieces. We need two more pieces, then we're good to go here. Then we can start the footings for these walls, and I'll show you exactly what's very important to do with these footings. Because if you don't do this, you're gonna have problems with all this lovely sand. All right, we'll be right back. All right, so also I thought I would mention, it's too bad we weren't doing one going down on the footing. We are doing one this year, just not right now. Um, the way you do these corners, you gotta be pretty particular. So we got a smaller, more narrow piece. What we're gonna do is cover that corner up first. Cool beans. I'll give you a hand with that. Okay. I need to figure out where the hell I'm going to put this. It's rain on the mini, but... Yeah, that'll work. That'll do. Maybe. So that's all. Pl oh, it's I need plastic. I thought that was plastic. Camera. I'll give you a hand with that there, big guy. 
Sorry to get you a little closer there, but we'll show you. Basically, you're just throwing in a corner piece before you uh, do your side. So you start your side going off of that, and this is only be one piece, obviously. Not even. Butte. So we'll bring you back and show you when we're uh, we're all said and, uh, and done here. Resist them on, ready to roll. So Mark's got it all covered up with uh, PL premium construction adhesive. Fully covered up. That one was actually the blue skin was was uh, it was peeling off the wall um, that tar because they didn't overlap it enough. Anyways, we kind of did that wrong. Anyway, doing it uh, horizontal. It's got to be done vertical. For a few reasons, mostly expansion and retraction. We get a lot of that up here in the north. Anyways, Mark's getting the footing ready to roll here. He's got our dug out. We're gonna line that with the uh, non-woven geotextile and then put gravel in and compact the snot out of her till the cows come home. Cool beans. We'll be back. Ready to use a little girl's room. Buddy, how's it going? Sore neck. Oh yeah. Busy weekend with the girlfriend. Yeah. 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 Oh, sore sleeping neck. in weird positions. <laughs> it's funny that our necks seem to be sore on the same side every bloody week. Yeah. So ridiculous. How you doing, Mitch? Not bad. Not bad. That's good. You're doing good. Where's Shane hiding? He's way over there in his chair. How you doing, buddy? Doing pretty well. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Yeah, so, got some walls going here. Mark and Johnny made this. Got their string line up for their heights. We are going to have to fill this up with some nice sand fill, but that's alright because we got to excavate for a walkway here. That's where all that material is going to be going. In here and in that walkway. Plus, we got to build up that area. You'll see. Yeah. So, every single block in this stuff is glued. 
Every single block. Looks good. Enough for the girls I roll with. That's for sure. No, it looks awesome. It looks good. And this little one over here too. One more row to go on that one though. Because we're going to be about five inches lower. And the masonry is going to have someone come in and parge it. Because we don't do purging. So we got our resisto up. We use the PL Premium to seal the top of it in. As well as did a vertical and horizontal obviously. So the reason why this part's left like that is because we're going to have a wall coming right off of here. Whoa, almost fell on my butt. And you will see how we're going to do that. That'll be tomorrow. Looks pretty good. One more row to go on that one. The only thing I don't like about this block is there's a hump in that. Right in the block. Smooth side, exposed side. The hump, most of it is towards the block, the back. So therefore, it starts leaning forward. Which is why we have these shims here. To keep it level this way. Pain in the butt, but hey, you gotta do her. Do it right or don't do it at all. You gotta shim it. Even a foundation, you use the mortar as a shim. That's what they do, everything's imperfected. And perfect. That's probably the best way to put it. It's up to the installation people to do it properly. Isn't it right, big guy? Yeah. Yeah. Take it from the pro. You hot over there, Shane? No? Pretty warm in the sun. Yeah, it's a little warm in the sun. We had a nice shade this morning, but it ain't gonna be nothing like it's gonna be tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be a scorcher. Ooh. Yeah. Johnny boy's having a good stretch. Anyways, we'll bring you back once we uh, finish our day out. Cool beans. All right. So, end of day one. Got these walls up. Both of them are done. We started with the other one we're doing. So you can see here the geotextile that underlays the entire footing, uh, both walls. Can't see it back here because we pushed a little bit of uh, fill up against it because we are expecting rain. Not bad for a couple of first timers. Not too bad. Not too bad. John here is getting ready. He knows it's the end of the day. <laughs> Time to get the hell out of here. So we got this one done too. We had these blocks uh, standing up against the back of it because that pipe was kind of pushing it, pushing it over. But that's finished grade for the wall. We just finished up this whole side. Um, because we didn't finish that spot, we had to get this wall going because we had to have a little bit of backfill there for that wall. So we had to get that going so we could actually backfill it. So, you guys, we'll see tomorrow what we're doing with this wall. And you can see the geotechs that are non-woven going up both sides of the footing. All these walls are done like that. In other words, I'm going to set my water down here. This is all really good sandy material. I'm going to find some stone. If you don't do that, your footing, boom, well that stone's gone now. Your footing will sink into the sand, which means these walls will sink in. I don't think my client would be too happy with that. I don't think. And those are the shims, just to tip it back, because this wall does lean forward, ends up leaning forward. It's a pain in the butt. Pain in the butt ski. 259, loving this machine. Oh, I wish I would have recorded it. We unloaded some pallets for the neighbor over there, which is the parents of the people who live here. 3,600 pound lifts. That machine lifted off the truck without my weight kit on there. I don't have my weight kit on there yet. Um, yeah, right off the truck. That's interesting. 
Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't have my weight kit on there. I'm gonna have the weight kit on there uh, by early next week. But yeah, without the weight kit on there, she lifted up 3,600 pounds off of a flat deck like it was nothing. I'm in. Yeah, yeah, she got a good size uh, hydraulic pump in it, I think. Liking that machine so far. Loving that machine so far. What do you think of that little 259? You've ran it a bit. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, compared to the 246, you think it's better? Yeah, yeah. yeah me too. That's the end of this video. You want to shut her down? It's been a while since you shut one down. All right, well, it's Monday, so we'll uh, have another bit of the videos there tomorrow. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, see you tomorrow. So we'll catch you tomorrow. Bam. Just like that. Bunch of pros.